The floor is yours, Mr. Dominic. Thank you very much for the introduction. I couldn't have said it better. Um, ministers, even, even if they uh, left, and honored guests, uh, Your Excellency, it's a special uh, honor for me to speak at this event of the 10th anniversary of Estonian cell here in front of you. You might think what has brick and paper to do. You will see there are some similarities and we face here or there the same challenges. I would like to present the group. Wienerberger is a diversified building material group, as we heard before, um, number one in bricks worldwide. Um, we employ about, about 16,000 people. We recorded last year 3 billion of turnover. We are um, active in 30 countries with 200, uh, more than 200 production sites, and we record an EBITDA brut uh, cash flow of more than 370 million. We are, contrary to the Heinzel Group, a uh, stock-listed company. We don't have a, a, let's say, core shareholder. We are a free-float company at the Vienna Stock Exchange since 1856. And you see, even with an ownership of uh, that kind, you can be quite successful. We have six uh, groups of products in our business. One is roofing solutions, facade solutions, where we have the plant here also in Estonia. Uh, blocks for walls, paving materials, you see it sometimes in cities, ceramic pipes and plastic pipes. We have as group two um, installations, two operations in Estonia. One is uh, our clay block plant in Aseri. We entered in 2001. It was a brownfield. It was an investment in a long time existing plant and we modernized it in 2005. And we invested also quite substantially, but not as much as Heinzel Group. And we give uh, jobs to 100 people directly and indirectly. You can only, you can simply double it. And our sister company, Pipelife, was also a plant here, a greenfield investment, like Heinzel, since uh, first uh, the new plant came in uh, 2004. Investment a bit less capital intense and um, 60 people. In the business unit, the business unit is the origin, uh, clay building materials is the origin of Wienerberger. As we heard before, almost 200 years ago, we are operating in 29 countries, 142 production sites, more than 10,000 people, and we record revenues of 1.6, 1.7 million. Azari is part of our region, uh, Nordics, which includes Scandinavia and Baltics, and you see what we heard also before, it doesn't only deliver products to the local market, but to a much wider region, including also St. Petersburg. If we speak about the business unit, we produce every year 11 million tons of clay products. That's uh, quite a lot. If you put them in trucks, there are 450,000 trucks a year, and that's a, a line of 7,700 kilometers. It would be from here probably to New York, uh, really impressive. And one thing is also very similar to Heinzel Group, we are highly energy intense business. We use 5.5 million megawatt of uh, energy every year. So it's really important for us what we heard before, that energy prices in taxes are very competitive. On the other hand, we saw now the industrial balance, but what do people do with our products? With our products more than 140,000 homes are built every year, and more than 240,000 roofs are covered. So it's really immense when you think how much that is, and you can also make it uh, show it in soccer fields. It's impressive. But what I'm really proud of, we launch every year more than 100 uh, new products, innovative product. Innovation is key. When you think of bricks, you might uh, think that's the oldest building material. It's from Babylonia or even biblical. You see the photo on the left, it's not that old, but maybe closer to when we were founded. But today, our business is highly automatized. And I think we heard before about chances where successful economies or nations should go. I think that's really a chance also for Estonia to combine manufacturing with information and communication technology to combine it in something like indu Industry 4.0. And we will hear later from Mr. Heinzel about it. But I really think we have to go into that. And manufacturing is important for each and every country. We know from statistics that those countries who had a solid manufacturing base, 
did better and come, came faster out of the crisis than those who didn't have that. We, um, the BRICS, yeah, we had the Olympics in uh, Brazil and we think really BRIC has many talents. Yeah, that's proven. First of all, it's versatile, it's energy efficient. Yeah, when you have, have a house made of bricks, you um, use, you consume less energy. They're durable. I mean, I spoke about biblical times, but uh, we found now the oldest roof tile in Austria at 660 years old. So we, that's really sustainable. We were always sustainable and we will be sustainable. We are natural. Yeah? Our products are made of raw material, burnt. There are no uh, additives. It's economical. The house, when you build, it's still one of the cheap uh, ways to build a house. Stable in value and beautiful. And this I would like to show with a couple of uh, first of our products. Here you see the Nordic product line that our clinker, which are produced in all the Nordic factories, we put them together and we provide them to all the markets. And here you see some examples what can be built out of them. Here's a college in Estonia. It's a very beautiful example that with a traditional building material, you can build something very modern. Here's a house in Lithuania where we used roof tiles. Also a nice example of modern architecture. Everybody would like to be there. And here, that's a project in Tallinn, where a sauna built in the 60s has been, let's say, remodeled with a kind of new overcoat with bricks from our factory. Um, now I would like, after the portrait of the company, come to our insight, or I would like to share our ideas, why is Estonia the right choice for foreign investments? Estonia has an excellent macroeconomic environment. We heard it before by the distinguished speakers. Estonia has an advanced health and education system. E-government, you're really far ahead of many other countries. I can say this that as Austrian. I hope uh, that our government comes from time to time here to learn something. Modern transparent institutions, that's a good thing in all Nordic countries. And in general, even if we heard very clearly and loud, there are some issues, but in general, you have a competitive tax system when it comes to corporate taxes. And you see the results on the bottom. Um, the GDP developed better than the average of the European Union. E-State, I said before, it's really fantastic. I looked it up on the internet, what you can do. When I look at the burdensome administration in my home country, sometimes I think I would like to become a citizen of Estonia. Really excellent. For us, important is a, a housing market, a dynamic housing market. And here you can see the population is uh, rather stable and the purchasing power increases in Estonia, even after the diff difficult years of austerity. And when I go through the country or travel up here from the airport, I see a big potential for renovation. And with renovation, you not only make a home be more beautiful, but you also gain on your energy efficiency and uh, use saves costs. And I think really, uh, what I said before, it's not only Estonia, it's the whole region what is important. Skilled labor, we heard it for a manufacturing company. It is key to have a skilled labor available and for us it's not so easy because we are not in the capitals. Yeah? We are somewhere uh, far and then we have to be an attractive employer and here maybe one thing uh, I spoke before to the Austrian representatives here. There's a very good system of dual education existing in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. Maybe that's something you could uh, look into. Infrastructure, we both companies have a lot to ship. Yeah, paper pulp or bricks. We need excellent infrastructure. That's not only broadband internet access. The digital infrastructure, no, also the physical infrastructure like roads, uh, accesses, and when you become, uh, uh, when you take over the presidency of the European Union, for sure, also link uh, airplanes and so on. Energy supply, we said um, we consume a lot of energy. The energy bill for the business unit per year is more than 200 million euros, so it's really a decisive factor where we are, where we invest. We are committed to reduce um, energy consumption, increase our energy efficiency, reduce CO2 output, and we did it already significantly. Yeah, the first goal was internally to process optimization. The second goal um, to reduce the energy consumption by 20% for 
from uh, up to 2020 on the base of 2010. That's, by the way, a European goal. So we totally adhere it and we are already a bit uh, ahead of that and that's very good. So for us, really key is uh, security of energy supply, a competitive energy price, and for that it's very important. We heard it before very clearly from all the speakers, also the tax situation has to be considered. And here I looked it up, uh, I researched it, one uh, remark uh, contrary to most other European countries, um, Estonia doesn't distinguish between big consumers and smaller consumers. Here's also something what has to be looked at or could be looked into it. And very important, uh, we are in the, in the ETS system, that's the, um, the trading system for CO2 certificates. At the moment, both sectors are exempt They're on this so-called carbon leakage list. That's a, a technical thing, but for us it's very important that we stay on. Otherwise, for the, for the industry that would create an immense cost factor which really would crush the industry. can say that would be something where we, uh, what we have to avoid in any case. Yeah? If I put it together, um, again, what speaks for a country in itself and especially for Estonia to make an investment interesting is a, in, a positive macroeconomic development. We need a dynamic regional housing market. There are possibilities to boost this market. Skilled labor is important in manufacturing, and no doubt for that. A well-developed infrastructure that we can ship the goods, the physical goods. And for us, we all spoke about it, the competitive energy price. Yeah, that's it for my side. I hope um, I gave you an insight in the industry and also in, in our way how we see what is attractive for us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dominic. Now the audience have a chance to ask some questions from you. Lugupeetud publikum, kas on küsimusi Inebergri tegevjuhile ära Dominikile? Janus Arogo from ST Energia. You mentioned also the St. Petersburg area as your, one of your target markets. Uh, please describe about the competitive, uh, your competitive position there. Yeah, that's a, that's a difficult one. We acquired the company here as a brownfield investment. It was uh, constructed in Soviet time, and the natural market was also St. Petersburg. Yeah? And uh, this export link always stayed. We have now a big competition field. First of all, the energy prices in Russia are remarkably lower than in Estonia. And also in Russia, over the last 10 years, competition invested heavily, heavily into brick capacities. Yeah, that was for a, f a while very good, but now with the recent crisis, there's a tremendous overcapacity. So you have the exchange rate of ruble, yeah, which makes them, them really, that's a fierce competition for us. Yeah, they, they have a, f a favorable exchange rate, they have an overcapacity they want to ship, and they have a very good energy prices, and they built in the last years relatively good industrial installations. So they are there. <laughs> and here's our advantage, what I said before, that we can combine the whole region. The product portfolio is not just Estonian bricks. We have them, let's say, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, sometimes even from Belgium and, and uh, Holland, to really provide the market with something what doesn't exist anywhere. And that's how we can somehow survive. So it's not a commodity strategy, it's more an upgrading strategy. Kas see aalist on meel küsimusi? Tundub, et puidutööstulid on viisakad. Ei ole, käte meerd. Ma siis küsiksin viimase küsimuse. I would like to ask a question from a slightly different angle. So do you obviously aware of all advantages and disadvantages of Estonia as you already have investment here? If you would think back and if you wouldn't know Estonia, your headquarter is in Venna, some 2,000 kilometers out of uh, northern coast of Estonia. 
if you wouldn't know Estonia, what could trigger the investment here? No, what, what for us is most important is, of course, the, the consumer, those people who build with our bricks. And uh, here we really have a, we believe in this uh, region, yeah, it's a dynamic region, and then there's one is new build, yeah, and the other one is renovation, so there are two axes we might think, and I think e Estonia in the Nordic context is an attractive market, no doubt, yeah. And everybody from outside looks at this one thing, uh, what is really different from other countries that you have from a governmental point, e-governmental point, really you set the, the standard very high and I think that's interesting for many countries to, uh, and for many businesses to come. Thank you, Mr. Dominic.